oh, I get so excited this time of the year. I'm sure everybody's really excited for autumn. I'm just so excited to see the colors change on the trees and then go into winter, which is probably my favorite time for photography. And what I wanted to do was tell you a little bit about the things that I've been doing to prepare for autumn. I've done quite a lot of scouting of new locations, I've gone to old locations, and I've got five top tips that are gonna make a really big difference to you if you're really keen on doing some great autumn photography. So, let's go. So before I get on to these five top tips, I've actually got a new member of the YouTube team, Pebbles. I'm gonna introduce you to Pebbles later. Okay, the first top tip is to scout your location. It's really important to know your local area. Most of my shooting in autumn is probably gonna be done in my local area around the sort of Peak District and around Cheshire. So I need to understand all these locations, what the type of trees there are there, what the foliage might be like, but more important than anything, I need to understand what good compositions there are. So when I go out and the foliage is at its best, I can say, okay, well, I know there's a really good woodland scene there with a great tree, it's gonna look good in fog, so I'm gonna go straight to that place. Okay, the composition might have changed a little bit when the colors change or the conditions change, but I'll have a good starting point. Now for scouting your locations, what I do is plot everything on Google Maps. It's a great tool, you can put all your locations and I actually, label them woodland scenes, bigger vistas, water scenes, and more intimate landscapes. And then each in each one of those, I might say a little bit more. So I might say, okay, well, this, this is gonna be great in foggy conditions, or this would be a really good scene around sunset or sunrise, or this has got a lot of beech trees. So when the beech foliage falls onto this river that's running through the scene, then it'd be a really great place to go. So that way, I know that I've got a good composition or a good few ideas of compositions. I've walked around these scenes and when autumn comes, I'm spending all my time taking great photos. So when you are scouting your locations, take your phone with you. It's a really useful tool. You don't always have to have your bigger camera. You can just walk through. Sometimes a camera can get in the way of looking for compositions. Also the great thing with an iPhone, it's really easy to put it in portrait or landscape or a square crop. So it allows you to take quick snaps of a scene to record them in these Google Maps. And it's a great way then when you come to Wharton to know where to go to, to get amazing images. Okay, tip number two is experiment. When this foliage comes, you want to know exactly how you're gonna take some of these images. Yeah, okay, some of the experimentation is gonna come when you're taking pictures of these beautiful colors and these beautiful leaves. But there's no reason you can't do it now because the leaves are starting to drop. So go out and experiment. Now there's four scenes that I'd recommend that you experiment with. And that's woodland scene, intimate landscape scheme, wider vistas and scenes where water's going through, which looks fantastic in autumn. I'd really encourage you to go out and take some water scenes. So it's important that you know where they might be and what types of trees there, there are in those scenes. Now, I recently went to somewhere that I'd not been very often before to do exactly this, to scout out a location. And that was Chrome Hill in the Peak District. I've come to the top of Parkhouse Hill, which is a series of limestone hills in the Peak District. And just look at my view. It is incredible. Absolutely amazing. So my main aim today is just to scout the area and see what compositions I can get. So when I do come up, when the conditions are right in autumn, that I get the color that's amazing, I get the mist, and I can just go straight to that composition. So I've spotted one down here. So it's a more, I, I'm, I'm going a little bit closer into the landscape. So can you see this tree that's just illuminated um, by the sun, which is probably about an hour off setting. And there's a wall that just leads your eye really good into the image. The sheep are there as well, which makes it extra special. Obviously, when I come back in autumn, fall, then they might not be there, but it really is, is such a nice image which, when you just take that sort of rectangle there. Okay, I am on a precipice. So, I'm gonna concentrate on my photography. 
take some shots, and I'll see you back in the studio. Not a studio, is it? Back in my little room with a computer. Tip number three, get a polarizer. So I think a polarizer is probably the most important filter in autumn. There's two things that it does. One, it reduces reflections on the water. So it creates really sort of milky shots and really reduces those reflections so you can get more saturated color down through the water. But it also reduces the reflections on the leaves. Now, if you're really lucky, then you've just had rain on those leaves. They look really saturated and, and beautiful colors. But if you use a polarizer and just turn it slightly, you can see that the saturation of those leaves really increases and it can add a real punch to your images in the autumn. So I would really encourage you, if you haven't already, to get a polarizer. Now, I use a Lee polarizer which is fantastic nissi do one which i think is really good as well there's a link to mine in the description below i would really encourage that you go out and get a polarizer even if that's the first filter so that was tip number three get a polarizer it's really going to help boost those colors and give them some real punch okay number four of my top tips is take advantage of the websites and the internet and the apps out there there's loads now, i'm going to go just go through two or three now but i'm sure that everybody if they've got any others for autumn and what places to go in autumn can link them in the description be below. So the first app that I use, which is an obvious one, is Google again. Um, so you've got Google Satellite View, which allows you to look at the trees from above. And it's a pretty good technique to see what sort of trees there are and you can also see what the spread of those trees are i used google maps before i went to chrome hill to find out what the trees are going to be like so the other um, apps or websites are weather apps and weather websites it's really important to understand the weather now i'm not going to go through that in detail actually thomas eaton i'll link it up here did a really good video on how he predicts um, whether it's going to be a good sunrise um, and he just uses looking at the low level and medium and the high level cloud and there's lots of other websites, not just the one that he showed in there, but I think it's a really good idea to go and look at that video and then it'll give you some ideas. Also, there's maps published online. Um, when I was in California, there's a map that showed what the fall, fall color was like, which was updated um, by crowdsourcing. There's a similar one in the UK um, for doing that as well. Again, the links to those are gonna be in the description. So having a map that you can look at and you can in, in sort of real time, see what the fall color is like by all the people that have contributed to that through crowdsourcing. There's a really good idea of seeing what state the leaves are in, and I use that in California to great effect. And then, if you're gonna go somewhere, then there's webcams, webcams everywhere. There's loads of webcams in the Lake District, in the Peak District, so you can actually see through those webcams what the colors are like now. So that will maybe help you to plan your visit to somewhere, and you might think, okay, well, it's not quite there yet. The colors aren't quite there. Obviously, you can go into Flickr, you can go to Instagram, you can see images, looking for hashtags as well of, of, of those locations. So. There's lots of apps and websites that you can use to, to plan where you're gonna go before you go there. Um, if you haven't been there before, or even if you've been there before and it's one of the scouted locations, maybe you can just see whether that's colors turning and, and whether it's a good time to go to that location or not. Okay, and the fifth one, the final um, top tip is check your gear. Make sure that you get all your gear out and you clean it. You make sure you know how to use your lenses. You've hopefully done that through experimenting with different ideas. So make sure you clean all that gear. You've got it all right. You know how to use your filters and everything is just in perfect condition for when you go out and take some great photos. There's so many times when I've not formatted my SD card or my batteries run out. So make sure that when you go out, that you, you've got everything exactly how it should be. It's a fairly obvious one, but so many times that's caught me out um, where I've used a lens that I've maybe not used for a while, macro lens for instance, and I, and I get it out and it's dirty and it needs cleaning and I have to waste time doing that in, in, in the field when it's much better to do it at home, 
you know, where you've got all the right material. Okay, this is Pebbles. She's a 10 week old Springer Spaniel and she's gorgeous. But don't know if she really likes it up here, if she doesn't like the light. So don't think we should keep her here for much longer. I just want to stay for you to say hello to her. So I'm gonna pass her over to my daughter. There you go, Emily. Oh okay, I'll say it again. So comment below if you've got any ideas for great websites that are gonna help everybody through this autumn fall. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the video next week.